The Caucasus history is ancient, connected to the Silk Road. Its place in current geopolitics is complicated. But what's little known and badly understood about the Caucasus is its role in the world's fight against biodiversity loss. The Caucasus is one of the world's biodiversity hotspots and one of the few in a temperate climate zone. There is more life per square meter in the Caucasus than in any other temperate climate zone in the world. What does that mean? Incredible diversity of landscapes that uh, uh, ranges from high mountains, some of the highest in the world, to temperate forests, subtropical forests, semi-desert, 6,000 species of plants, an unbelievable variety, including many that are endemic, can only be found in this part of the world. An incredible variety of insects, reptiles, birds, and mammals, uh, including predator species, uh, iconic ones like the unique leopard that roams Europe's border here in the 21st century, but also bears, wolves, and prey species that are have long been lost in, in Europe, from uh, ancestral mountain sheep to mountain goats uh, and even a gazelle. So how do we stop biodiversity loss? The first and most important step is to set aside places where nature can be more or less left alone, where natural processes can be left to work. These places are the world's protected areas, the national parks and nature reserves. And in the Caucasus, we have a system of protected areas. It's the size of Yellowstone and Yosemite combined, two of the biggest parks in the U.S. West, in a territory that's actually smaller than Great Britain. So what's the problem? The system of protected areas exists. The problem is it exists on paper. It's a phenomenon called a paper park. It's drawn on the map, but it's not really operating because it lacks funds. In a world of seven billion people going to 10, nature can't take care of itself without investment. Despite the fact that uh, social and economic development is evident in the region, still the financing for protected areas network is sometimes comes at the end of the government's budgeting priorities. As a result, many protected areas need a lot of assistance, such as patrolling vehicles to combat the poaching, anti-fire equipment against uh, more and more frequently appearing fires in the forest, uh, topping up salaries for uh, park personnel, more assistance in maintaining of basic infrastructure and equipment. The Caucasus Nature Fund, CNF, provides most essential assistance to the national governments in filling those gaps in key protected areas. And we can say with full confidence that long-term successful conservation of unique biological diversity in the Caucasus largely depends on sustainable development of the Caucasus Nature Fund in the future. So how do we address the funding gap? There are really two ways. There's the project basis, which is the typical way that international donors have addressed this. They come in and they do a project, and then they leave. Our approach is different. We're there for the long term. We've been supporting this park for five years or in the process of repairing all of the facilities that have been built through international aid. This is a ranger station that was built 15 years ago, but it's today badly in need of not only a paint job, but replacing some floorboards and making sure the investment is not lost. That's what we do. We sustain these parks and make sure that the investments that are being made are maintained and sustained. You know there's a saying, conservation without money is just conversation. So having uh, Borjo Mikharagov National Park is very proud of and also grateful having CNF on the place because CNF support is really countless. CNF provides support for uh, Borjo Mikharagov National Park rangers, the people who just do work on the field. And it's very essential because we keep these good people on the place and they are not forced to leave uh, for good salaries somewhere. Uh, CNF supports a uh, range of infrastructure on the field. Uh, by the help of CNF, uh, range shelters, uh, range stations were renovated. 
Uh, also CNR provides equipment like firefighting traps and also camera traps which we use in different ways like w for its essential use is just uh, capturing wildlife and monitoring the wildlife and plus we use it for an for anti poaching campaign which really helps so the camera traps we have we after we've stabilized the park by assuring that its basic needs uh, are met, our strategy is to focus on three programmatic areas. The first is protection and monitoring to make sure the conservation function of the park is fulfilled. Second is ecotourism to make sure that local communities are benefiting from the park's activities. And finally, perhaps most importantly, eco-education to make sure that the people around the park are learning about its function, understand the importance of biodiversity and nature for their future. So the world loses a species every 20 to 30 minutes. That's a rate that's not sustainable and it's much faster than the historical extinction rate. We uh, need to stop biodiversity loss. It's long been understood that it's a moral problem. Who are we humans causing this biodiversity loss to decide the fate of other creatures on this planet? But today, scientists and increasingly economists understand that this is also an economic issue. We depend on the web of life around us. People need nature as much or more than it needs us. So it's not too late. Biodiversity loss in the Caucasus can be stopped. We're a young organization, but today, Caucasus Nature Fund is already helping to sustain more than 10 protected areas in Armenia, Azerbaijan, and Georgia. By 2020, we plan to double that number. And if we succeed, we can ensure the future of this magnificent wilderness that still thrives right here on Europe's border.